Welcome back to the How to Do It Christmas Marathon. We are on the final two hours. Yes! I mean, oh. it's fun. Yeah, they've been fun, along with uh, Nash Bozard and Mark uh, Lushk. I'm Jason Pallara. Thank you for joining us. If you're joining us for the first time, you can find us at live.lordcat.com. How to do it is every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern at live.lordcat.com, except this Tuesday, because we've just done eight straight hours of how to do it, and I think I might murder someone if I do how to do it again this week. Yeah. Uh, and we also have another show, Tuesday Tech Talk, at 7 p.m. Eastern, live.lordcat.com. Also post it to radiodeadair.com. And don't forget Nash's stream, live.radiodeadair.com. Deadair.com. Oh. Radio dead air. Dead air. <clears throat> Little indigestion there. Uh, live at Radio Deadair.com, Monday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern to 2 a.m. Woo! All right, I got some more questions via Twitter. Let's, let's go through them really quick. Okay. This is from Ma- uh, Michael McLean. Hello, Lord Cat. My question is of an old computer that's messed up. I'm not good with tech stuff. My problem is I'm on XP, and every time I get a Windows update, my computer blue screens and it goes into a boot cycle that won't stop. I reinstall Windows, and the same problem keeps happening. The only way I can keep it working is by turning off updates. But is there another way yeah. to fix it? Mark, you got I haven't one on this? found anything. You what? Then, you, I haven't found anything. Oh. Yeah, I had the same thing. It, it, it tries to install it. It fails. It, it tries again. It fails. It tries again. It fails. Well, it's, it's I remember cool. this happening to me on XP, and my vague recollection... Vague recollection is that um, there's a temporary update file that needs to be deleted. Mm. But I'm wondering if he reinstalled Windows. I'm wondering if he repaired Windows instead of reinstalling it. That might be it. I would do a search on Google for uh, delete temporary uh, Windows updates and yeah. see if you can uh, see if there's like a temporary file somewhere you can get rid of and see. It, may, it could have been a damaged download. And see if that helps out. Uh, if not, I would say, I would say, to say uh, in order to keep the computer functioning, disable updates, and make sure you're running antivirus and anti-spyware, and you're going to have to be vigilant and careful. Or, <clears throat> or manually download all the updates listed mm. from Microsoft's website until you find the one that's causing the hang-up. And then don't install that. Don't install that one. Yeah, but I'm lost thi- yeah, I can this, ignore that one. Yeah. If you have all the updates installed manually, Windows Update will see this and go, well, he's got this one. We'll ignore it. So that... May, how Hundreds of updates? How old is your copy of... Well, all right. It might be an antique copy of Windows XP. Um, um, no, even if SP3... It still installs hundreds of updates. Yeah, that's true. Crap. Yeah, I guess the the simplest fix is to find that uh, find that d- that temporary file because otherwise, yeah. Yeah, because uh, I've had that happen where a te- where a Windows update failed to install and it caused blue screens, and I think that's probably what you're running into. Um, not the easiest thing to do, and no. <clears throat> unfortunately, that's the best. The other option is to be extremely vigilant while you're online. Sorry. All righty, uh, we go to the next question from Andrew Forsyth, or uh, Draft Raider 42 Is there any way I can run Steam and games without installing it on the hard drive, like an SD card, for instance? If you don't want good load times, then yes. Yeah, if, I mean, if you want terrible load times, then SD card's fine. Uh, I don't recommend that. <laughs> I really don't recommend it. Uh, install it to the hard drive, and uh, yeah, install it to the hard drive. There really is no better solution than that. I mean, no. I, I, look, TF2 is a huge game. It's a couple of gigabytes large, and it takes a long time to load as it is on a standard seventy-two hundred RPM hard drive on an Re-tri- SD card. Yeah, that's going to cause the load times to uh, to triple, quadruple, quintuple. You don't want to do that. Yeah, I, your standard I, hard I, drive reads about a couple. <clears throat> 20 like tens of gigabytes per second it's it's like boom 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 the standard flash card sd card reads tens of gigs in a few minutes so the difference in load time will be go get a cup of coffee pretty much 
Go make the cup of coffee. Um, yeah. Now, if you're thinking of if you're thinking of putting them on an SD card so you can take them to play games somewhere else, generally that doesn't work, and Steam actually prefers it when you download the game again. Sorry. Yeah. That's just how it works with Steam. It's not a not a pretty thing, but hey. <clears throat> Alrighty, we go for the Buffalo Guy 1991's question. I've had this guitar that I've not played in a while due to having college work. I can fix this. Mm-hmm. And so much other stuff keeping me busy. Anyway, when I plug the guitar back into the amp, I get a buzzing noise, the same kind you hear if you touch the tip of the plug with the amp on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I jiggle the cord around, and it does not stop it. If I, I then put pressure on one side of the cord leading to the guitar, and it stops, but only as long as I keep pressure on one side of the wire... How bad is this? Is there any way I can fix the, by uh, by? Is there any way I can fix this without having to buy a new guitar? It is an electric guitar. Uh, I have uploaded a YouTube video to YouTube to demonstrate this, and let's check out his uh, let's check out his demo, shall we? Yay! Um, just uh, load this up here and uh, cover Nash's beautiful face. This one's easy uh, for you. Hello. Um, this is for how to do it. Uh, the video demonstration, as you can see, the whole, there's, where it is, when I turn the amp on, it makes that buzzing noise, but it stops usually as soon as I uh, put pressure on here. But when I let go, pressure, uh, well that's it. Okay, uh, so pressure uh, gets rid of the buzz. Without pressure, buzz. All right, this is easy, easy, easy to fix. You need, however, it's easy, but you're going to need two things. Well, three technically. Uh, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, number two, I believe, and you're going to need a soldering mm-hmm. iron and rosin core solder. What you got to do is. Where you plug in that guitar, that jack, you'll notice on either side there's probably two little screws. You're going to want to unscrew them. Pull it out. There is a black wire in there that I'm guaranteeing you connects to that to that uh, jack in a certain way. And that wire is loose. That's your grounding wire. And the result of that grounding wire being loose, that's that buzzing noise you're hearing. It's not making a complete circuit, and it's it's open. What you have to do is apl- get that wire back onto its connection really securely, apply some solder, secure it, screw it back together, you're done. That will fix it. It will go away. Your guitar will be fine. It's, it's as simple as that. It's just, a grounding, it's just a grounding wire. So you are all good. You've had this problem in the past, I take it. Oh, everyone's had. If you've worked with the guitars at all, you know this one immediately. If you if you hear that open buzz like that, mm-hmm. you know it's uh it's it's just it, it's it's a loose connection. Mm-hmm. All righty, it's easy. We travel forward to Ouija Boo's monitor doesn't always turn on. I love the show. Hoping you might be able to help me with this one. My LCD monitor is only two years old, but for the last few weeks, sometimes it just won't turn on. Ooh. might go for days with no problems, but then I'll hit the power button. Nothing happens. The power button won't even light as I press it down. Sometimes when this happens, if I press a button a few times, it comes on. Other times, I just have to let it sit and use my second monitor for a few minutes. I'll try the button again. comes right on. <sighs> Fiddling with the plugs in case those connections were loose doesn't help either. Now, you said before you can't fix monitors, but seeing as this deals with the power button and not the screen proper, uh, it kind of does. I was hoping there might be something I can do besides buying a new one, possibly a loose connection I can tighten or something. Thanks for any help. I don't think it's a loose connection, guys. No. No. Uh, there is something electrically wrong here, and it's... Uh, I, do LCDs use... They don't use capacitors, do they? No, no. Mm, so tiny, it, tiny ones. Yeah, but. really. But you see, there's a the thing, though. Really, really tiny ones. They're still capacitors, though. Yeah. And I'm th- well, they use capacitors. They, the backlighting needs some some huge amount of power. See, that's what I'm thinking. But that's what I'm thinking, though. I'm thinking uh, one of a capacitor or two are dying. Well, I'll yeah. tell you. Here's how how in modern tech, in modern tech, just about any modern tech, it's rarely, if ever, a switch. Um, sometimes it can be. 
But most switches these days, especially on monitors, are electronic switches. And those, they, you push the, pushing the button makes no difference to the state. It's all dependent on the computer, the software that's actually inside the device, telling it what to do when you push that switch. Yeah. So it's doubtful that it's loose. It's not a switch issue here. Uh, you could, if you can open up your monitor, you can look inside to see if any of the capacitors are swollen, as, I, I, i.e. they're not the same conform size. Um, but here's the problem. On something this picture. small and this thin, <sighs> something this thin, you know, that, that soldering job is going to be a little hard to do by hand. Very. E- even, e- for, even for a very skilled uh, soldering if, iron artist. If you screw something up, you have damaged. You, permanently, your monitor. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find a, an example of a swollen capacitor image, just so you can get night. Yeah, let's see. Here's I'm trying to find a good picture here, so you can get an idea of what a swollen capacitor. Yeah, here we go. Um, I pass on link. Well, they can be swollen. They can be leaking. They can be corroding. Um, yeah. <clears throat> any number of things, really. <clears throat> These are swollen capacitors. You see, it looks like a it looks like a can with the top bulging out a little bit. And here, this comes from the infamous Dell capacitor gate. Ugh, capacitor gate. That, that's what it really was. Um, this tells you this is the difference between swollen and leaking. So you get an idea of what those look like. This is the swollen and leaking uh, capacitors. I'll put that up on the uh, thing yeah. for you. So you can see, uh, let me uh, zoom in on that so you guys can see that. Uh, swollen capacitors, you can see, will be bulging out. Uh, you see uh, over here, good capacitors on the right. Uh, they're, just, they're just regular crosses. On the left here, you can see that the X's here are kind of swollen, bulged out. Leaking capacitors, again, uh, it's typical corrosion. Uh, swollen capacitors can also always, le- almost always lead to... My color scheme has changed the Windows 7 Basic one. Thank you. That was helpful. Thank you very much, Windows. That's helpful. <laughs> yeah, right in the middle of doing something. I changed this color scheme. You like it now? Oh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. So it's it's partially due to Google Chrome. I've had Google Plus open for so long. Mm. Um, I'll just have to net restart uh, the window manager. Anyway, uh, it, but here's the thing though: those capacitors in your LCD monitor aren't going to be that big. No, they're going to be. Gonna be... Yeah, they'd be really tiny. Very small. And they're going to be tiny. They're going to be hard to... If, if it is a capacitor issue replacing those, it's going to be really hard. Ah, you Plus, you also have to get a, a magnifying glass and read on the capacitor <sighs> what size, what... Uh, what is it? UDF? Yeah. You, yeah, it's it's the capacity of the capacitor, um, the charge. Yeah, it's... it's you can... Tr- if you don't care... About that monitor at this point, if if you could say if you could say screw it, I'm getting a new one. Let but first let's try to fix this one. Give it a shot. Yep. But be very very careful because if you make one mistake with soldering, you're done. Alrighty, I'm going to skip ahead to a post because I've got a special request on this one. <clears throat> so I'm going to skip ahead to 197 here. And uh, 197 is a special request, so let's uh, take a look at it. A special request. And <clears throat> this is a from Maxon, a six. Uh, this one, uh, did I, which one was it? 196. He wanted 197. 197. Okay, this is a desktop problem from Curarac. Uh Today, Christmas, I got two sticks of RAM and another fan for my computer. Turned off my desktop, installed it, turned it on, worked fine for a few minutes. <clears throat> Opened up Firefox and XChat 2 to get back online. Then it just turned off. No blue screen or anything, just off. Turned it back on after checking conditions, found it all fine. However, when turning it back on, it did the same thing, but as Windows was loading. Tried it again and didn't even get past checking the DMI, or the DIM, forget which, pool, and just turns off. Uh, was asking Celestia if maybe it was a PSU and other few more checks we get. It probably was, but want to know what you guys think. Did a further check later. Later, The longer I have the PSU off and unplugged, it will come back on for longer when I try it. Stopped trying after a few more tries to establish a pattern. Tried blowing out dust. Needed it, but to no avail. <coughs> Recommended on company, recommendation on company to buy a PSU. If that you agree sounds with a lot like a PSU issue. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like... And we were just talking about swelled capacitors. 
Um, this is a capacitor issue. Yeah, probably. Because when capacitors swell or even leak, um, capacitors are a weird component because they don't just fail. If they swell out like that, they can still retain a little bit of functionality. Yeah. So th what's happening is when you turn it off for longer and longer, those capacitors are managing to charge back up a little bit, and they're holding their charge a little bit longer, but they can't keep the charge once you keep the system turned on. Yeah. So, yeah, you, that, that power supply is not long for this world. And uh, it may also be a heating issue, some broken fan or something. It could be a heating issue. Could um, be heating. Could be. Yes. I'm wondering. I'm actually. I'm actually wondering. You've got 16 gigabytes of DDR3, 1600 megahertz RAM in there. Ooh. I'm wondering if it's your RAM that's overheating. Long Ooh. shot. Long shot. I know. But I wonder if that's the case. Do you, does your RAM have any heat sinks on them? Yeah, he doesn't mention what brand they are. No, I don't know what brand they are either. Um, f now, uh, now it is an Intel Core 2 Quad. 16 gigabytes of RAM, an NVIDIA 8600, 8600 GT, and a 550-watt PSU. That's enough. That, that wattage is okay. Yeah. Um, well, the first thing you can try, and he here's the reason why... Uh, Kurak says, tried pulling it back down to just the 8 gigabytes, and yes, they have heat sinks. Okay. Uh, this has run for two okay. years just fine before. Uh, Kurak, do they still, uh, does it still run with the 8 gigabytes, or do you still experience that problem? Because the RAM just may very well be a coincidence here. Yeah. Sorry for him to spot. Could it be a voltage issue on, on the settings? Mm. No, it still shuts off. Okay, yeah, power supply. Yeah, I'm thinking power supply now. As long as all fans are turning, power supply. Yeah, make sure, all, yeah, make sure all the fans are turning. Um, check, check the heat uh, sensors in your BIOS just in case. Go ahead, check your heat sensors in the BIOS, just in case. Let it run in the BIOS for a bit. And if uh, if you notice that the heat's abnormally high in the BIOS, then it might be an overheating issue. But if it's not, and it still turns off in BIOS, it's uh, it's the PSU gone, I think. That's yeah, the here's, thing. here's the thing about uh, RAM. Used to be RAM only came one type. It was the green stick <laughs> with with the black chips on it. That, the black that, ICs, yeah. Right. Um, nowadays, RAM s still comes like that, or also comes with heat sinks or heat dispersals. Heat, I, they're not heat, really... dis heat dispersal. Heat spreader. Heat spreaders. Heat spreader. There we go. Thank you. They come with heat spreaders on them to prevent overheating. Now, the cost difference between the standard sticks and the ones with the heat spreaders these days has become absolutely minuscule. Yeah. So there's no reason not to buy RAM without it. Even to even some kind of heat spreader, it's it's much better for your system and it works a lot better overall. There's no reason yeah. to buy RAM without it anymore. It, it, there's no significant cost savings. Hey, um, Curl, you said there was a lot of dust there. See if there's dust behind the motherboard too that's making a connection between the Ooh. pins and the uh, and the and the aluminum behind the motherboard. Um, see if there's some dust there too. Just you know, you said you said you really needed it, so. It's just one of those things you might want to check, you know, yeah. one of those oddities. <laughs> um, but check that just, just in case. You see um, Vogel mocking us? How to do it Christmas auto answers. Clean out the PC. It's the power supply. Yeah. What do you want from us? <laughs> there are a lot. Well, here's a, there's, the reason a lot of these answers are similar is because a lot of the same issues pop up again and again, but they can cause, they, they're, can cause different issues. Um, I mean, they can cause different symptoms, they can cause different results, but they all tie back to the same root cause. Uh, power supplies are one of those wonky things. Even if they're working off, they can not work at all. They can work a little bit, then overheat and die. They can work sort of, and then a, a screwy capacitor can make it stop. It, it, that, the power supplies are a pain in the butt. See, I think I think Vogel's just upset because we couldn't automatically solve his streaming problem. Oh yeah. 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 You have two thousand dollars? Then we can't fix it. If you have two thousand dollars, I can fix it for you. I can fix it yeah. for you real easily. Yeah. <laughs> I'll solve that. Like that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, but yeah, uh, Kuro, I check behind the motherboard. Make sure there's no like hair or dust behind there that's causing any sort of short there. Yeah. 
Um, otherwise, it's either a short in the main board, which probably can't fix for you, or it's a PSU, and I'm willing to bet you're willing to spend money money on another PSU. By the way, any uh, we've given out recommendations before, but um, um, I'm a fan of Zalman. Uh, got any recommendations off the top of your head? My Antec, brain. Antec, Seasonic, Antec, thank you. That's Corsair. Antec, I love Antec's Earthwatts Green. Yeah, they're um, they're good. Because while the cables on it are not sleeved, good cable management can solve that. But the uh, ability, the power output on it, the, the cost per performance, really good on the Antec Earthwatts model. So that, that you'll get that cheap, but you know you're getting a solid unit. It's just they cut the frills out, but they leave in the weight and the power of the unit. It's just it's, it, you don't get all the, the bells and whistles. But you get the performance and you get the reliability, which is what really counts. Endless asks, could a loose screw holding the motherboard or PSU cause this problem? Generally, no. Not on the power supply. On the, power. the power supply well, is... even on Even on the motherboard, though, uh, the, the loose screw, all that's going to do if you have the proper risers is just lift the motherboard away from the aluminum. And yeah. the what you, and the shorts you get with, with that are, is, are improperly seating the motherboard next to the aluminum. Um, so, you, no, I don't think that's it. Uh, Kingdom1232 has a long one for us. Uh, this is question, we're going back to question number 150 here. Okay, I go back. Uh, LK IRC chat room problem. We've recently moved from a house to an apartment, gag, thus having new cable service, grande, Texas only, to Time Warner Cable. Uh, so that is a double whammy on IP address and other network stuff. Plus, on top of that, we've gotten a new router, which is a router modem. Oh, I decided to get on IRC by XChat a month after the move, and when it opens up and reconnect, it goes through its logging on text and then says, no ident response, username prefixed with squiggly tilde, and does nothing. I try reconnecting, and then it says, well, that's, that's ident port 114. You're never going to open that. Uh, I try reconnecting, and it says I'm already in the chat when I'm clearly not. Uh, throughout that time, I've tried to connect, but the same scenario happens every time. Only a few times does it actually work, and I can, I can get on. I've looked for solutions, and they don't give me a straight-up answer. I've even uninstalled and reinstalled XChat, but I only found that it doesn't make a scratch on the problem. Is moving, routers, and ISP, and whatnot the problem here, or does Geek Shed not like me? Hmm. <sighs> that looks like lost packages. Okay. So, first thing. Uh, no ident response, username prefix with tilde. There is a service called ident that runs on port 114. Uh, you don't need it. Um, so don't worry about that. That's no big deal. Uh, ident is... ISPs generally don't like it when you run ident. I don't know why. They just don't. It's a paranoia. I don't know. Um, so you, your username it gets prefixed with a tilde. That's Don't worry about that. Uh, what could what ha what sounds like to me is that there's some dropped packets between Geek Shed and Time Warner Cable, and you're never actually joining the chat room. And there's, uh, I know it's a TCP connection, and it eventually it should get back to you. I just think that when you do connect to Geek Shed, you need to give it some time, a lot of time, <laughs> and eventually it'll work. Um, because it, it, as soon as you're connected, I mean you're connected. Uh, it could be a geek, now. It could very well be a geek shed issue. It could be that the servers are overwhelmed and, and you can't get on. They're really slow. Um, it could be a Time Warner issue. Uh, it could be a ti it could be a packet timeout issue. Could Does be. Does it happen <clears throat> connecting to any other IRC network? Yeah. Have you tried any other IRC network? Does that happen too, or is it just Geek Shed? Because if it's just Geek Shed, then it's a Geek Shed issue. Yeah. Here, here's. Or a routing issue between the two. Yeah, or a routing issue between the two. I have a quick way, a uh, quick little test you can do right now, even though I'm kind of plugging myself at the moment, go to live.radio.air.com and try to connect to that IRC. Yep. And if that don't work, <coughs> but, because uh, that one goes to Dark Mist, not Geek Shed, it's a totally different IRC network. Yeah. If that doesn't work, then you have a different problem. But What you could do, and I've noticed ISPs doing this more and more, is that they are blocking IRC ports because of botnets. Or they mm -hmm. tend to filter them out, or or they tend to filter out certain IRC commands. That traffic shaping is fantastic, isn't it? What you could do is you could start an SSL connection with Geek Shed, and that when you're doing that, you're going to have to start. Uh, you have to create a new server in your servers list, 
and you have to go if, instead of port six 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 seven, it's going to be port six six nine seven. Uh, click this is a secure connection. Click uh, accept invalid certificates. I know not the safest thing in the world, but you have to do it. Uh, these certificates are not signed by any root authority, so whatever. Uh, then click okay. OK, and then it, then it looks like an HTTPS session. It's plus six six nine seven. Excuse me, you have to use the plus. Then it, traffic shaping looks at it, and it looks like a secure HTTPS connection, which it cannot muck with. So maybe but, that it could that could be the problem that Time Warner is doing some weird traffic shaping on you. So here's the funny thing: <clears throat> the average user is not going to know to do this. No, but someone who's actually running a botnet will know this trick like that. So this has solved nothing. Nothing. <laughs> and just frustrates the customer. Could this be an intrusion detection system going wrong? If it happens just after the ident response thing, if the server is trying to ping you or open a port with you and some intrusion software goes, oh, 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 this is danger. Mm-hmm. And cuts off connection to the server. Now they can block since this is not on port four four three. They could block an SSL connection. They generally tend not to. Yeah, because blocking SSL. Yeah, you can block SSL but still allow secure HTTP. Yeah. But not every single secure HTTP out there is con is configured by someone who knew what they were doing i.e. properly. So that means you could try to connect to, let's say, your bank account or say, you know, you're paying your electric bill or something online and it's got to go through that SSL. But if they don't have the port right, you can't. So they probably are going to let that through because they, they have to make sure those work right because the, if they don't, <laughs> then people will complain, I can't pay my power bill and there will be problems. I've been placing these shortcuts on my desktop, he continues. Uh, my computer control panel, uh, you know what they do. Power options, so I can change my uh, change up my computer sleeps if I leave it to do something during the night. Um, and wireless internet adapter, so I can enable disable the Wi-Fi when I unplug the wired internet. The switch to do that doesn't work anymore from wear and tear. Uh, uh, those are the icons I have, as well as they seem to vanish randomly whenever I bring my computer out of sleep, and sometimes when it doesn't go to sleep. I have a feeling it's my virus scan, but I highly doubt it. I have no clue what's going on when it happens. I just pull them back in there. You know what might be going on here? Any solutions, suggestions, random thoughts, and ideas? Uh, I've had this kind of happen on Windows 7, where Windows will just never remember some icons that I just randomly put there. And the way I solved it was I got my desktop the way I wanted it, and then I rebooted the computer, and then Windows remembered where those icons were and what those icons hmm. were. So you may want to try that. Put the icons on there and then reboot Windows. Not the best solution in the world, but it might work. Other than that, I don't know what it could be. I hate, I, you know, I, I hate that how most modern operating systems and even software updates require rebooting so often. You'd think at this point that would be kind of an obsolete thing. Uh, you'd think when I change the desktop it would Would require it. a reboot to remember, yeah. <laughs> So you may want to try that little reboot trick. I, I, don't know. I hate when operating systems think they know better than me. I really do. Like, I yeah. know what you want. No. You oh, uh, really Mediate don't. says another way is to change permissions so no one can modify icons. Yeah, you can try that too. I'll yeah. lock it in. Uh, recently, my computer is really scrimping on charging. What happens is that it charges all the way to 78% and stops as if it were at 99%. It uh -oh. never goes to 100%. I even turned it off one time to let it charge, but alas, it was still at 78%. In order to fix this, I have to unplug it and plug it back in, and we'll continue to charging by 1% or 2% before I have to do it again. This is a sign of the power socket failure, power adapter failure. I know it's not battery failure because that it was replaced soon after I got this computer. Are you entirely sure it's not battery failure? Is this a it, new battery? Because this sounds a lot like that old lithium-ion problem mm -hmm. of battery memory. Is this an OEM battery, or is this a third-party supplier battery? Yeah, is this OEM, or did you get this? Uh, Kingdom12322 one, two, one, two, two is in the chat room. Uh, did you get this from uh, eBay, or did you get this from retail? That's the yeah, question. It's, it's third-party. Oh. Third, there you go. There's your problem um, right there. 
Ours probably. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it, the problem with third-party batteries is, yes, they will work, but they are not always quality. eBay, yeah, they're not always quality. Um, sometimes you can get reliable third-party manufacturers. But well, in Windows, I know in a couple of versions of Windows, later versions of Windows, you can set the power option to not charge it past a certain percentage. Um, but you have to dig deep through the power options to find that option uh, when you're on power. I think that's, I think that's a battery saving option. I'm not sure though. You'd have to check that. And another problem is smart batteries. Um, when you buy from a third party manufacturer and not an OEM, they are, they have, they it used to be batteries were batteries were batteries. Now they have circuits and, well, no, they always had circuits, but they have, uh, it, they have chips in there that tell them how to do things based on the computer. And if those aren't exactly right, if they're not, if they don't have the right coding, if just any particular reason, they might not charge properly. Yes, Dell, Dell laptops have those now. It's it's ridiculous, but you know, I'm gonna, gotta, b- before you before you replace your battery with an OEM battery, though, I'm going to go with uh, oh, oh my god, a giant rock, and I'm going to say check the power settings. Yes, I'm going to say that I, I think I think he's onto something here. The I think battery he, saving issue. I think it's a battery saving issue. Um, I, I think it may just be as simple as a silly little little issue in Windows. Um, if it's not, though, it could be that battery memory thing, and that's... Yeah. And I'm not going to discount all third-party batteries, because I bought a third-party battery for that old laptop right over there. It it's works. an antique laptop. And it's, wor- it's worked brilliantly since I replaced it, because the old, the old one was just... And finding a brand new one from Dell was impossible, because it's an antique. Yeah. Um... I just use that one's mostly I use that one for a teleprompter and sometimes I use it for other stuff but it's 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 a I think it's a Pentium 3. It's an but it works. So third party batteries aren't always bad. But the more modern ones because the OEM manufacturers want you to buy from them. They get tricky and they make it where there's incompatibilities and issues and, and they want things to be done their way. They did the same thing with ink cartridges. Remember uh, Lexmark put chips into their ink cartridge? Oh, yeah, they lost that. They completely lost that in court. <laughs> yeah, they, they tried... What, what Lexmark did was, uh, in the, the inkjet cartridges for your printers, they put chips into the inkjet cartridges. So you couldn't use a third-party inkjet cartridge. If you tried to plug it in there, it just wouldn't work. Oh, and, have... and, on, and on top of that, on top of that, they had it specifically programmed to no matter what the ink level was, you would have to replace it after a certain amount of printing. Uh-huh. No okay. matter what the ink level was, yeah, oh, scumbags. So, so what? Dell, how, what tried, the, Dell yeah. tried similar crap with their printers. Dell was sourcing their printers through Lexmark, so that's why. And uh, uh, what happened was third party uh, third party providers managed to emulate to that chip, and Lexmark was DMCAing the crap out of them. Don't you they just got, love unintended uses of the law? They got taken to court. And they lost. <laughs> oh God, that's so funny. Mm. Uh, might not be even a problem with you. May it's maybe just a problem with displaying battery percentages because that's not an accurate science percentage of charge of batteries. Yeah, it could be yeah. that the battery is fully charged and Windows just isn't calibrated to the battery. Yeah, here's the only an idea: thing... run it from full. To no charge. Yeah, and time it. See how long it takes. Yep. Time it. See how long it takes. If it's like four hours, that's not bad. If you're fine with it, then just don't care. Try that as well, yeah. All righty, let's move on to his other part of the question. Outlook 2010 does not show email correctly. It shows a bunch of boxes where the picture of the email is and gives me that image might have been blah, blah, blah. I've already gone to Trust Center settings and checked the first option. It doesn't work. Anything I missed. Oh, God. I have nothing good to say about this because it requires deleting client data. Yeah, I literally have nothing good to say about this. There's nothing you want to hear out of my mouth right now. Not one thing is going to make this a fun day for you. Uh, I The only... Not a problem. Okay, the only thing I have to say to you is uninstall Outlook 2010 
go into your users folder. Uh, you go to it's in Windows Seven C users your username. Uh, you have to show hidden folders. Uh, then you have to go into app data and I want to say roaming. Um, but it, yeah, it's roaming. I, I think it's roaming. And you got to go to Microsoft and then Outlook. You got to delete it all. All of it. It's all, all your garbage emails. now. <laughs> Back up your email somehow. <laughs> all you your can emails. Export them. Yeah, you, you can, can export you can, them. You can export them, but um, you got to yeah, you got to basically nuke it. So before you uninstall Outlook, uh, export everything to something. And save Thunderbird. Them. Thunderbird. Well, yeah, you can export them. Get into Thunderbird. Yeah, uh, Dragar. It's uh, images aren't showing, and uh, the trust center settings are set properly. And I've never been able to fix this with anyone else's advice outside of nuking it and reinstalling Outlook 2010. Never been able yep. to do it on my end. I have. That's the only trustworthy way I have of fixing it. Is yep. there's something corrupted in, in the uh, in the blob file and. <laughs> Or hey, here's an idea. Once you export everything to Thunderbird, just stay there. You know, for Thun- you know, Thunderbird's never really been good enough for me. Uh, I I have always yeah. wanted the calendaring and the scheduling, and Thunderbird syncing up yeah. with schedule. Uh, here's my biggest problem: Thunderbird syncing up with scheduling with Android or iOS just doesn't work. Uh, it's, no, you know, that, that's my biggest problem, and they never really got around to fixing that. However, I will say that if you just use it for email and you don't look and you don't use any of the other features of Outlook, Thunderbird's good. Yeah, this is very good. I know Thunderbird has calendar and scheduling, but it's it's very wonky when compared to Outlook. It's not yeah, you, you, very it, to me. It's not very good, but it, it doesn't work a, for me. You need a magic exchange server to make it even talk to any other device. Yeah, yeah you need Google Calendar to make Thunderbird sync with iPhone and, and Android, and it's like I don't care. Yeah. I just see my my problem is when it comes to communication. I just want. I want Outlook to I, I whatever client it is, I just want it to work. And Outlook is Outlook's guilty of this too. It's just it's what I use and then you're asking me to then export it and then convert to Thunderbird. I'd only do that on the on an extreme circumstance. There's yeah. no you know. Um I'm sorry, we got the specs. So let's go to Weejibu's MacBook question. Ooh, this is gonna this is gonna hurt us. Uh, I know I asked a question, but I've got one from my friend of mine. She has an older MacBook Pro and in her words Quote, when my computer is running on battery power, something on the front left side clicks. It's a really soft click, and can be both regular and irregular. It started out like doing it once every minute or so, but this time it's doing it every five seconds or so. Click? Running on that, that, that could be... Mental? I don't think that's... If it doesn't do it on... Uh, if it doesn't do it when it's powered from the wall, oh wait, mm. people are saying the hard drive is in that location. It's dying. Yeah. yeah it's... Have, have you used, used any MacBooks lately? Uh, it's, a Mac Mark? it's a MacBook Pro, not an Air. I have a Mac. I have a normal MacBook. Mm. But... Could it be? Um, could it be power settings may, uh, turning the hard drive on and off? Maybe every five seconds. Mm. I've that's, heard of wonkier things weird. from an operating system. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on. Oh, <laughs> uh, boy. That, yeah, that's a hard drive. Uh, I would disconnect the hard drive. You can you can remove it quite easily and connect it to a proper PC with a SATA cable and some power. And back it up. Um, back it up first and see if it clicks there. Yeah, see if it clicks there. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, it, it might very well be a power issue. Of turning it on and off, um, but it, again, hard drives clicking, random irregularness, bad, bad juju, bad juju. Yeah, uh, my hard drive is clicking too, and I yeah, don't like it. Back it up. Uh, she started. This started happening after she replaced the battery. It might be the hard drive dying. The computer's six years old, after all. <sighs> yeah, six years old. That hard drive's probably on its last legs. Um. But you say when it's on battery power, one of the things I might be concerned about, I might be concerned about a connector next to the battery. You might be getting some, you might be getting some uh, ozone shot. Sparks. There. Yeah, some sparks. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, that's why the click when initially when you said the click that that's what what concerned yeah, me. Yeah, when you hear hard drive and click, you're like hard drive dying. But if it's only when you replace the battery, you may have did you did you get the right battery, or did you get the wrong yeah. battery? Did you, did you get a battery that's supplying too Might many? Might be amber? even the broken charger. Could I have a, two. Yeah. I have two chargers here, and one makes my battery um, make some bad, bad uh, feeping noise. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's a problem with the uh, with the battery itself, or or if you've even got the right voltage or right uh, or right watt battery. You know, is it a third party battery? Is there six, it, is there gas buildup in the battery? And six year old hard drive. If it's a hard drive, yeah. um, you you should replace that anyway. Yeah, you should replace the hard drive anyway. Yeah. Get a bigger one while you're at it. Yeah, yeah, a bigger one. All right, we're finally, finally on page four of the thread, guys. Hooray! Ish. Woo! Buy a new one! Buy a new one! We only got an hour... Look, we only got an hour to go, man. Yeah. Tablet market for artists... Hello, Lord Cat National Maluku. Thank you for your entertain for the entertainment while I'm stuck at work on Christmas night, babysitting a telephone and a desk with no customers. Uh, you have all talked about tablet devices on the show rather regularly, and I heard, I believe, Nash mentioned Photoshop on Android. Mm -hmm. Being an artist, this sparked my attention simply because I didn't think it was possible to run even a cut-down version of Photoshop on a tablet device, except for a tablet PC, and even those are barely passable for doing more professional digital painting and the like. So my question is, is there a mobile tablet designed for drawing? It seems like it should be the first place we go with such a technology. It uh, does, doesn't it? And yeah. it's not. Uh, a digital sketchbook is pretty much exactly which art, uh, what artists need at conventions and art shows. Uh, naturally, a touch interface couldn't work as they are now, uh, uh, as they are now, because you need pressure sensitivity and accuracy. I currently use a Wacom Cintiq for my art, but it's basically yeah, a monitor and input device. It has all the requirements for pressure sensitivity, angle, and precision, but it's certainly not mobile. If no such device exists yet, can you estimate what they would need to have to create such a device, like faster processing and more memory, and if you believe it's something that will eventually be coming out? Thanks for your time! I listen to almost every Tuesday night when inking and coloring comics. That's awesome, Sage. Awesome. I have a solution. A solution? I do. Solution. Solution. Um, most touchpads these days, most touch inputs, is what's called capacitive. I believe it's capacitive, right? Yeah. 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 Um, these work based on actually touching a body part. Is it heat based? I heat. believe it's heat. Yeah, it's heat. That's mm, how heat? it's. Capacitive? I said it's capacitive. Um, yeah, electric resistive resist is pressure. No, c capacitive resistive is pressure. Capacitive uh, is heat. That's heat, why. That's why in the cold it doesn't work. Your finger, your uh, finger sure doesn't it's register. Because people in the channel are I, saying it's not. Heat. I, I swear it's heat based. It's. Yeah. Well. Anyway. It's not well, however, right, it's, right, whatever. It's electrical based. Right. Fine, whatever. The capacitive. Uh, that's that's why you can't just touch it with a stylus and it works because it's reacting to what's going on with you. You are. It has to have flesh. Oh, that's right. In, in the cold, it, in the cold doesn't work. It's too dry. That's right. 